Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar with myself, Dev Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 16th of April 2018. The time has just gone 12.15 BST, British Summer Time, quarter past 12 UK time, quarter past midday. Uh, and I'll, as always with the webinars, what I'll be doing is I'll be leaving the risk warning screens, uh, risk warning slides on the screen in front of you to have a read through. It's all very straightforward stuff. Uh, it essentially states anything that is covered in today's webinar is purely just my own thoughts, views, and opinions and comments. I should not be cons construed as explicit uh, trading or investment advice. And this is something that will keep my compliance department very happy. And if you tune in regularly to our, to our webinars and the videos that we, that, we, that we produce here at CFC Markets, you know that it's all fairly, fairly standard stuff. So while you're having a read through the risk warning slides, uh, I'll just quickly, have a, 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 a quickly just talk about the kind of major topics and themes of the financial markets uh, in the past few days. Uh, essentially, uh, the, the markets had a reasonably muted reaction to the airstrikes in Syria. Um, South Sea caused a lot of political, political news, and I suspect it's going, to, it's going to remain in the news probably for the next 24 hours, possibly even a few days. But uh, the, as far as the financial markets is concerned, it's relatively there's not has been a massive reaction to, to these to the situation the global the geopolitical situation isn't any clearer isn't isn't any more optimistic but then again it isn't necessarily any worse um it, it, you know the, the, there isn't necessarily kind of fear factor from investors as, as some people may have may have anticipated what happened here on monday morning but hasn't, hasn't actually really delivered uh, there's been a few corporate stories out there. Uh, Shar Pharmaceutical has sold their oncology business. Char, uh, Char, um, Char Pharmaceutical is also possibly looking at the subject of a takeover bid. Speaking of takeover bids, uh, Whitbread um, is coming under a bit of pressure from activist investors. Uh, a couple of activist investors have built sizable single-digit stakes in the company and there's once again talks that Whitbread could be demerged, could be broken up into the cost to cost uh, division and also the Premier in division. These are just a couple of the kind of major headlines, uh, corporate stories in, uh, out of London this morning. What I quickly do is I'll go to our the news and analysis section of our website. And what I'm going to do now is have a quick scan through the week ahead. Uh, I suggest you, you take a look at the, the news and analysis section of our website. It gets updated several times throughout the trading session. A few of us, a couple of us here in London updated on a daily basis. And also we have contributors uh, from, uh, from our the market analysts around the world as well. So if you scroll along here to the right, you will see late every Friday, after, every Friday uh, at the end of every trading week, every Friday, we will have the week ahead update posted. And I'll be quick look through the week ahead. So keep, keep an eye out for one of the major economic themes, major corporate and economic stories of the week. So turn to tomorrow, to tomorrow, Tuesday. We have Chinese GDP, retail sales and industrial production. On Tuesday, we have full year figures from uh, sports, uh, JD Sports. On Tuesday, we, tomorrow, we will have full year figures. Sorry, we, we have first half figures from Associated British Foods. I'm actually we'll be in the process of uh, uh, having an update uh, on our website tomorrow morning as a reaction to the numbers and, the, and also commentary on the share price move. Uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday, we have uh, we continue with US bank earnings. We have Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley will have their Q1 numbers out. And on Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada, the Canadian Central Bank interest rate decision. Um, coming through on Wednesday. So they're, they're the major both corporate and also economic stories to watch out for this trading week. Uh, for those of you uh, that, that are, are unaware, we also have a trading, we also have a economic calendar on our trading platform. If you go to the market pulse section, fourth option down, market calendar, gives you a breakdown of uh, the major economic events of the day and whenever the, the, the figure comes in, it'll be populated in the actual tab and then of course you also have a comparison forecast to look at and also the previous figure as well from that particular reading. So some of the economic indicators that I, that I mentioned um, are, are going to be, are, are going to be out, out in the next, uh, out of this week, are going to be listed here uh, on the particular trading calendar. So it is worth keeping an eye on that. Uh, what I'm not going to do as always is I'm going to run through uh, the major indices, a couple of some commodities and currency pairs. Uh, if you have any questions about, about, about markets I'm covering, feel free to ask uh, in the chat box. And if there are any markets I haven't covered uh, and you want me to have a look at, please, please feel free to ask again. 
So take a look now at what's going on with the FTSE 100. So the FTSE is in fairly decent shape. Uh, as you can see here, the FTSE 100, granted it was the early hours of the trading session, but as you can see here, the market outside of the official tra trading hours between 8 a.m. and, and 4.30 p.m. for the summertime, we can see here the market did manage to push push higher here, and it, it, it just fits in nicely with the, with the valley the FTSE has been in uh, for over two weeks now. Granted, this 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 higher this this high here, multi-week high here was created out of hours, but it's going to show you which direction uh, the market is moving in. Now, what's interesting about this ca this this particular uh, candle here is that as the market was pushing higher here, we saw a steady increase in the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, so the, which which effectively measures momentum. And as you can see here, when the market pushed higher here and created the highest it's seen in a number of weeks, that that happened when momentum is actually in decline. So when you have a scenario whereby the market's pushing higher, creating, in this case, you know, higher higher highs, but the that is not that is not replicated on the MACD indicator, it would suggest that we could see a bit of a turnaround. So so the market has, has had a good move um, on the FTSE for the last couple of weeks. That could look to see a bit of a turnover or a bit of a pause before we potentially see another move higher. But this upward trend over the last couple of weeks is still very much in play. I just suspect that seeing as positive momentum is cooling, we could see a bit of a pullback. We could see a pullback towards the 7,200 area or perhaps down to the 50 moving average at 7,165. But if should the wider kind of more positive, should, should the wider positive trend of the past say two and a half, three weeks continue, we could be looking at taking out the, uh, we could be looking at targeting the late, late February high of 7,340. And if you go north of that, you could be looking at getting back up towards the psychologically important 7,400. And of course, 7,400 is also going to coincide with roughly the 200 day moving average, which, which would also going to make, the, make that particular level all the more significant. But it's only if you head south to say 7,100, could, could we, we then, then we look at possibly targeting 7,000. And if you go south of 7,000, then it is, it's, it's quite likely that, that this move is only a correction and the market's turning over on itself yet again. And a move south 7,000 could bring us back down towards 6,839, the late March low. I'll take a look now at what's going on over in Germany on the DAX. So the DAX, has, is in, for the last few weeks, has been in correction mode, like the FTSE 100. As you can see here, the high that was created this morning has taken out the high of the, of the middle of March. We've had a level here not seen since late February, so that, that tells you what the kind of sentiment is. We're at multi-week highs. We printed multi-week highs. It would suggest that things are looking quite positive. As the market's pushing higher here, we're still seeing a steady increase in positive momentum. So the upward move is being confirmed by the steady increase in the MACD indicator, which is which is good, which is good for the uh, for the bulls. The next level to keep an eye out for to the upside will, of course, be the late February high of in around 12,600. And if you go north of that, then that, then it's an idea to keep an eye out for this price area here of uh, 12,741. Notice how it's we've had a bit of a consolidation in rather price area. It acted as support um, in, in in January, and also we've seen a bit of consolidation from the from early from early February uh, in, in around that area as well. Can I so keep an eye out for 12,741? And if you go north of that, we could be looking heading back up towards say the, the 13,000 level. Uh, if seeing as we, the market has had a decent volume in the last couple of weeks, we may see a better profit taking, or we may we may see a bit of a pullback. And if we do, we could be looking heading back down towards the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around 12,300. But uh, it's only if we it's only if we, if we head south of say 12,000, to get a big psychological number, could then we'd be worried that the market's going to turn over on itself yet again. And if that were the case, then keep an eye out for this price area here in around 11,000. Well. Let's call it 11,700, but to be a bit more precise, it's in around 11,692. So keep an eye out for that area level to the downside should the market turn over, should the market go south of 12,000. The American markets, uh, both the Dow and the S&P 500, are in better shape than their European counterparts. And we'll have a look at those now. So take a look here at the Dow Jones. As you can see, the last couple of weeks the market's been broadly kind of moving higher a steady series of higher lows but we haven't really had the car the, the, the coinciding higher highs 
So there's, there's a firm base in here, but we're not really see we're, we're not really seeing a major amount of buying pressure kind of driving it higher. So the way I see it is this: um, if the market remains north of this red line here, the 200 moving average, the outlook is uh, is going to be on the positive side. But that being said, we haven't seen any signs that the market is looking. To, we haven't seen any signs that there's any, any major buying pressure out there to kind of drive the market up towards 25,000. So we've seen a nice collection here of higher uh, higher lows, but we haven't really seen the higher highs on the flip side. So it would appear that, that this area here, in around the kind of 24,600-ish, which kind of coincides with the 50-day moving average, this 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 this, uh, this blue line here, does appear um, to be acting as a bit of resistance. So we we get we need to take out that level here. And also um, the, the the yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes to play at 24,840. We need to take out that before we can become more confident that this upward trend is has has got legs basically. And if we go north of that, then the big psychologically important 25,000 level, then that will come into play. Then once we go beyond that, and if you take if you get a high of 25,000, we we'll then be back to say about three week or four week highs, and I would suggest that we're kind of we are. Broadly speaking, continue on this um, positive move that we've seen uh, over the last couple of weeks. If we fail to take out the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average, and the market turns over on itself again, we may find a bit of a bit of buying support coming in, into play in around the 24,000 mark. Uh, and then if you go south of that, the next area to keep next area to keep an eye out for will of course be the 20-day moving average, which comes into play at 23,628. And if you go south of that, the trend moving average, then turn your attention to the February low of 23,138. And that, that's the next big level to keep an eye forward to the downside. Take a look now at what's going on at the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar chart we've seen. It's holding above the trend moving average, but we, but we haven't really seen a nice collection of higher highs. So we can't really be overly confident. But as you can see here, Similar to the Dow Jones, it's north of the 20 moving average, which of course would, would suggest that it's positive. We've seen a nice collection of higher lows here, but we haven't really seen a corresponding collection of higher highs. As the market's been pushing higher here in the past couple of weeks, we've seen a steady increase in positive momentum. So the upward move is being confirmed by the MACD indicator, so momentum is with the buyers. We just haven't really seen any kind of any major buying pressure to, to drive it on towards, let's say, the 2700 area. Which of course is a big psychological number, but it also coincides with the 100-day moving average. And notice how throughout the month of March, on a couple of occasions, 100-day moving average did both act as support and also resistance on, on a couple of occasions. So keep an eye out for 2,700 on the upside. And if we go north of that, uh, then keep an eye out for the kind of this area here of 2,752. We saw a lot of uh, saw, we saw some price consolidation in around that area uh, in the middle of last month. And if you go north of that, they keep an eye for 2,800 to the upside. We, if, if the market does drift lower, we may find some support in around the 2,647 or 2,640 area. And if you drift south of that again, we may find some support in at the 30 moving average, which comes into play just north of 2,600. And if you go south of the 30 moving average, then turn your attention back to the February lows of 2,532. I take a look now at what's going on in the gold market. So keep an eye on what's going on here in gold. To be honest, the gold market has been a bit dull the last number of months. Uh, if you're a if you like trading range bound markets, then gold will, will, will be possibly one of interest for yourself. But if you're interested in trading the trend, it may not be the most exciting for you. Uh, broadly speaking, gold has done fairly, has, has spent a lot of time north of, say, 13.10, but also kind of south of, say, 13.55 or 13.60. Um, the trend recently in the past few, few weeks has been to the upside here. We have seen a nice collection of higher lows. We haven't really seen that many kind of classic examples of higher highs. This candle here does look quite bullish, but bearing in mind, and you may think to yourself, oh, this could be a snapping out of it. This candle occurred last Wednesday, around around this upward move around 4 p.m. last Wednesday, when it was announced that Saudi Arabia um, intercepted missiles from Yemen, which came into which came into Saudi airspace. So 
that that move to the upside in gold happened on the back of the of the announcement that Saudi Arabia uh, uh, inter intercepted missiles from coming from Yemen. But as you can see, the market has drifted lower on the back of that since. But we can also see that this 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 blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play around 13:30, has uh, has actually a decent level of support in recent weeks. And while we remain north of it, it is likely that the bias is going to remain to the upside. But we would need to take out the recent high of 13.66 before we can actually get more confident that the the market is in an upward trend. Should we go north of 13.66, we could be looking heading to 13.75, a level not seen since July of 2016. And even if we do drift a bit lower, even if we do drift south of 13.30, we may find some buying, buying support coming to play in around 13.20. And even if we go south of that again, we may find some support coming in on the kind of 1305, 1306 area. It's only if you go south of 13,000, 1300 rather, we'll, we'll start to get a bit worried about the price action of gold. I'll take a look now at what's going on in the oil market to start off with Brent crude oil. I'll start off here looking at Brent crude oil on, a w, on the weekly chart. And I'll explain why, and you, you'll see why in a second, because I have the Fibonacci retracement analysis uh, imposed on the chart so for those of you that, that don't know what the Fibonacci retracement is if you go to the technicals and then if you go to studies with, within that oh I'm in, the, I'm in the wrong area here under drawing tools rather uh, it's, this is the Fibonacci retracement here and it essentially states that this the Fibonacci kind of school of thought, retracement theory essentially states after, after a major market move some, if not all, of that move is retraced, and and um, it's it's believed that there are certain kind of key levels that the market that a market move will retrace its levels to. Uh, twenty three point six percent of the move, thirty two point eight percent of the move, fifty percent of the move, and sixty one point eight percent of the move, and also one hundred percent of the move. So if you look at Brent crude oil here on the cash market, and take it from the high of twenty fourteen down to the low of twenty sixteen. That move was quite substantial. I went from north of say 116 down to around south of 28 dollars a barrel. And if you look at the, if you apply the Fibonacci retracement, you know it's going to suggest that x amount x amount x percentage of that move is going to be retraced. And as you can see here, the market has retraced over 50 percent of that downward move. Of that downward move from the high of 2014 to the low of 2016, the market has retraced more than 50 percent of that move. This is the 50 percent line here, the dotted line. We're pretty much just on the 50% retracement at the moment. So the market has re regained 50% of it and has hit a level not seen since late 2014. It would suggest that things are looking quite bullish for the oil market. So I'll take a look now on a daily chart uh, to look at some uh, areas which could be of significance. This dotted line here, which you're looking at, is the 50% is the retracement. So we can see how the 50% 50, 50 retracement mark on Brent crude cash is actually currently acting as a support. And that comes into play in around $71.71. And, 71 and even if you do manage to get a drift a bit lower there, we may find some support coming to play in around the $71 mark, or even possibly as low down as the $69 mark. And then even if you go south of that, with the, 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 this price here, which converges on the 50-day moving average and the 100-day moving average, we may get to get um, see a buyer's end of the fold. It should be, should be dipped down here, and that will bring us down to around... $66 and say 95 cents because the, the oil market has been in a solid upward trend since June of last year. So we're talking about a you know a nine, ten month, ten month rally. So even if you do have a decent pullback, we may find fresh buyers entering the fold. And most of the upside on a uh, on Brent crude oil uh, potential area of resistance could come into play at 76.10, a level not seen since late 2014. I'll take a look now at what's going on on the WTI market, and to be fair, the chart looks reasonably similar. Uh, it's re re recouped about 50% of the losses that, that was incurred between 2014 and the lows of 2016, as you can see here. But uh, 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 but at the same time, obviously, the price levels uh, are different as it is different markets, but the, the shape of the chart is fairly similar. We can see here since uh, June of 2016, it's been in a solid upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Even though we saw a sizable sell-off in, uh, in late January, early February, the market continued on its, its upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Only on Friday, we hit a level, we hit levels not seen since late 2014. So we are talking, 
we are talking uh, levels um, in about three and a quarter, three and a half year high. So it gives, gives you an indication of how, how much the market has come along uh, in recent months. Uh, if we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking towards the kind of big psychological numbers of say $68 a barrel, $69 a barrel, $70 a barrel. 70 will be the big one to keep an eye forward to the upside for WTI. If it moves to the downside from here, we could be looking at support coming into play in around $66 a barrel or perhaps down even low as $64.30. And even if it drifts south from there, we may find some support coming into play in a $62 spot $89. 50 moving average or even down as low as $62 a barrel itself. Like I said, it's been a solid upward trend for, for nine months. It's at its highest level, its highest level in over three years. So this, this, the, the bullish trend is likely to continue. So even if you have sizable pullbacks, we could see some fresh buyers enter the fold. I'll take a look now at a few currency pairs. As I mentioned at the top of the webinar, um, I'm happy to discuss any any markets you want, you want to have a look at. Just feel free to type away in the chat box. I'm going to do a few of the major currency pairs now: Euro dollar, pound sterling, Euro sterling, and dollar yen. But if there are any markets you want me to, to take a look at, feel free to type in the chat box. So we're looking here at the Euro versus the US dollar. The wider picture has been a, a market which has been a fairly clear upward trend. In recent weeks, though. It's been a bit range bound. It hasn't been. It's the euro has held up against the US dollar, but hasn't really had the energy or the momentum. They can keep on pushing higher and then towards a 125 area. So you can see now at the moment we're pretty much resting on the 50-day moving average, which comes into play in around one spot 2326. Uh, if we remain north of that, the likely the like it's likely that the the positive uh, trend that's been in play for, place for recent months is going to continue. Keep an eye for the upside 124, and if you go north of 124, we could be looking heading to the March high of 124.76. And if you go beyond that, then the next big, big psychological number to keep an eye for will be one spot 25. Even if you do drift lower, we could find some support coming to play in around the 123 area or the April low of one spot 22.15. And even, it's only if you, if you take out the uh, the March low here, this, this 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 particular candle here, which came into play on the first of Thursday, the first of March at one spot at twenty one fifty four. It's only if you take out that that candle that, that 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 low there, then traders begin begin to to worry, and we could see a bit of a, a deep a deeper retracement uh, in line for the euro dollar. And if you go south of that, we could be looking heading back to this area here, the early the early January high of one spot twenty ninety two. We're now going to look at the pound versus the US dollar, which has had a great run. We're north of, comfortably north of one, four, one spot 43. Looking at here on a longer term daily chart, if you draw a low from the lows of March last year through the lows of August 2016, granted there's a few occasions they traded south of this trend line here uh, in April, in August last year, but, always, but it still managed to hold, hold above it. While we remain north of this trend line, it's likely that the positive upward move in pound versus US dollar is going to continue. And as you can see here, in the past couple of sessions, we've taken out the, the, uh, the March high and we, we've, we've traded north of 143, a level not seen uh, since January of this year. Or so, And if you go north of the January high, it would take us to say towards 144, 145. And these were levels not seen since the 24th. Of June 2016, which obviously, for those of you know, you can obviously for those of you if I uh, can remember, that is the early hours of the morning after the UK's EU referendum uh, date. Friday, the, the 23rd was the date, but as the early hours of the 24th, we saw that major sell-off in sterling on the back of the result. So uh, moves to the upside. If, um, it's likely that, that the upward trend is going to continue. Classic example of higher highs and higher lows. If we continue to press higher on, on, on euro pound, sorry pound dollars cable um, we could be looking heading towards 144 145 146 so on and so forth even if we do drift lower we may find some support coming to play in round for, 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 for kind of the lows of today's session where and which, which coincide with the highs of last month of in rounds about one spot 42 uh, we may even find some support coming to play in around this area here one spot 41 55 or even down as, down as low as one spot 41 
but even if you drift lower, we, we've had occasions where you know we, we could find some support coming to play in at one spot 40, which coincides with the 50 moving average. And to be perfectly honest, even if you do drift below the 50 moving average, as long as we hold north of the, the, the trend line, I suspect the outlook could remain positive for pound US dollar. Take a quick look now what's going on in Euro Sterling. So after months and months of being a bit range bound, we did see last week the euro break south of the uh, the March low uh, uh, and go out to print a, a level not seen since June of last year, June or sorry May of last year. So we are talking about 11 month lows that were reached recently, only on Friday for euro sterling. So you know my interpretation is that that tells you what what you need to know about which the direction the market is is, is heading. We've hit a, we, on Friday we hit a 11 month low. We've Pull back from that ever so slightly, but we still haven't really shake, shaken at that recent that negative move off. If this negative move continues, continues, continues um, in this direction, we could be looking heading back down towards zero spot 86, and then back, back or potentially back down towards zero spot 85. Notice how after the market took out the uh, the March low, that 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 March low at zero spot 86.67 appears to be now acting as resistance for the for the for the bounce back and even if it does go north of that we could be looking running through resistance in around the 0 spot 87 area and even if you go north of that we could be finding finding resistance coming to play at 0 spot 88 it's uh, in order for the kind of um, positive sentiment to be restored in the in the euro sterling the market would need to, re to regain the trading moving average which comes into play at 0 spot 88 87 and then if you go north of that, uh, bulls will be looking to, potentially looking towards the, the March high of 0 spot 89.67. So as soon as there are no uh, inquiries or, or comments and there are no requests for me to take a look at another market, what I'll do is I'll gonna wrap up things up now in a minute. I'll do uh, US dollar versus the Japanese yen. And then I'll show you one or two things on our trading platform and that will be uh, today's session. So... For the last number of months, so from November until March, or last month, March, we saw a pretty obvious downward trend in the US dollar versus Japanese yen. Market created a lower low here, lower high. A bit of sideways trading uh, in January, but then a class example of lower low, lower high, so on and so forth. That's a downward trend. But now we have appeared to be recouping some of the ground. Not this, given the, the, the scale of the sell-off we've seen, seen between November and the lows of March, we went from, say, 114 spot 73 down to 104 spot 63. Quite a considerable sell-off. Um, we, we, are, we are recouping some of that ground. And the market has been pushing higher here. We can see that's been confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. We are comfortably above the 50-day moving average now, which comes into play at, at 106 spot 77. If you can hold north of that, we, we could see this upward move continue. And, and if, if we do get to push on higher from here, we could be looking at running into uh, running into resistance at 108, uh, and if you go beyond that, we could be looking at um, target, potentially targeting 109 spot 78, a level not seen since uh, since early February uh, of this year. But if the market does manage to turn up, dip below the 50 moving average again, and t and and um, I started to drift lower again, we could be looking at heading towards 106, and if you go south of 106. We could be looking heading back down towards 105, and then south of 105, we'll be looking towards the March low of 104 spot 63. And if you take out the March low, we'll then be looking at potentially heading back down towards 104. And bearing in mind, we haven't seen 104 on Euro Sterling um, for quite some time. It was November 2016 was the last time we saw 104 on Euro Sterling, so it gives you an indication of how significant the March low is. Uh, of uh, 104 spot 63. Like I said, uh, we're going to wrap things up in terms of the markets we, we've, we've covered just there. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with our trading platform, I've already showed you where you can find the economic calendar under Market Pulse. It's the fourth option down. It's also worth pointing out some of the some of the updates that we do in terms of analysis gets posted on the news and analysis section on our website, which I showed you earlier on. But some of them actually get posted on Insights, which is the second option down. This is Market Insights here. This gets updated throughout the day, economic data releases, some of the market uh, updates that we do get posted to Insights, and in fact, a video recording of this webinar is going to be on Insights in the next hour or so. 
what I'm looking, what you're looking at here is the chart forum, and the chart forum is essentially when uh, when I'll take us when well, while the analysts or or even any of the um, CMC markets account holders would, would take a screenshot of a particular market and then write a few of the words about it and about what they think the market's going to do in terms of the price action and also levels to keep an eye out on, keep an eye out for. So keep an eye out on the chart forum as well. Um, in the same place that you found the the um, the, the signing signing up page for this webinar, feel free to uh, to sign up for other webinars that we that we have on offer. So t tonight um, on Monday the sixteenth of April at nineteen thirty for the summertime half seven p.m. UK time, we have a two hour special on overcoming the four major major trending obstacles. On Wednesday the eighteenth of April at nineteen thirty for the summertime half seven p.m. UK time, we have a, seminar, we have a webinar rather on next generation forex, and then of course uh, next Monday, uh, twelve fifteen, will be our our uh, weekly Monday update. So feel free to uh, sign up to, to all those webinars as well. Uh, seeing as there are not no kind of comments or questions at the end, I just will I like to thank you, thank you all from here, all of us here at CMC Markets. Have a good trading week and good luck.